Welcome guys to another quick video on Color TV. Today we are having a look at a little trick that you can use as a Zerg player if your uh, opponent, a Terran opponent, goes CC first on the high ground. It's a strategy that was recently discussed on Meta, a show hosted by Atosis, and the person who came up with it is uh, Katz from Root Gaming, and he explained in detail what exactly this strategy is all about. He sent me a few replays and uh, talked to me also about a few variations that you can use. And what we are trying to do today is go over a few things that you can do when you're trying to execute a strategy, when you would do it, what the possible counters are, how you deal with them, and what you have to do in general to win the game, also how you just build up your own bases and your tech behind it. It's not necessarily something that is uh, gonna win you every single game, but it's something that will surprise a fair amount of opponents. It's by no means at all an all-in, because you can always just follow it up with a standard play, and it's designed to give you a bit of a head start. You want to be ahead of your opponent, you want to be in a better position than he is, and you can also just try to get an early uh, win if he makes the wrong decision. Uh, Katz in this situation sends out his first scout at 13. So once you have 13 supply overall, you send out one of your mining drones and try to scout. In this scenario, we have a big four player map, so uh, Katz usually scouts cross position first, but it still works if you scout your opponent on the second position. Because what you do is you start with your normal 15 hatch behind it. So you go down with your drone at 15, you build your hatch, and you're still scouting with drone number one. And you're trying to find out what exactly is my opponent doing. In this scenario you can already see that with the amount of minerals that the Terran player has he will start with the CC first. The drone now comes in and here comes the command send on high ground. A little bit of a safer variation that Terran players use these days when they don't want to risk building the command center first on the low ground. So what Katz does now is he waits until he has 300 minerals once again. He squeezed in a couple of extra drones in this scenario. You can toy around with the timings here. You don't necessarily have to do this, but as you can see in this position, we have the SCV even following the drone. But now the Terran player wants to scout on his own. He wants to see what's going on there, wants to know what the Zerg player does. So Katz is a little bit late with the, uh, with the third hatch in this case, but it still works out quite well for him, as you will see very soon. We have the hatch now blocking the natural of the Terran player. And in this particular scenario, top does not know what's going on. He doesn't see, he doesn't scout it. We're going over a few games later on where the Terran player sees it early on and what he can try to achieve and how you change your strategy if that happens. But for now, let's just watch the game at hand. The Terran player doesn't know what's going on. We build our spawning pool after the third hatch immediately and the Terran now goes straight into his barracks, of course. But at this point, he still has no idea what's happening. He has no vision of the hatch and you can already see that it will definitely complete. Behind all of this, Katz is just droning up, so you just play a standard macro game behind this and uh, you, for now, neglect the hatch a little bit. What you want to have later on is two Jones down here to build spying callers as soon as you can and that's something that Katz sends out right now. So the Jones are now on the way to the bottom left so that he can build the spying caller once that the hatch is done. Your idea is to just delay the second base for the Terran for as much as possible. Contain him if you can, but the idea is really to buy yourself time and to make sure that the Terran doesn't get an easy third base. The mining at the natural, of course, is also being delayed by a great amount of time. So the command center now floats down and suddenly the Terran player is like, what? What's going on here? He's like, this is one of those what the fuck moments when you're like, have no idea what's going on, especially when it happens to you the first time. So we have the drones already down here, the marines move down and we immediately build a queen at the hatch. But the marines are now trying to move in and you can already see that behind this we build zerglings that are now streaming towards the bottom left. We had to cancel our first spine crawler, the second one is now being attacked, there are a couple of marines, SCVs already coming down and we have to cancel one of the spine crawlers, the drone goes down, but the zerglings are already on their way. So even more zerglings now being built at the hatch stream and it's the perfect timing, both of them at the same time. We walk up the ramp, we take down the SCVs, so SCVs and marines are dying, the queen is there, we can start to spread our creep, delay the hatch off even further, buy a, uh, just make sure that the Terran player has to use a few scans as well. Zerglings in the main base. So this is one of those scenarios where you get a very early win. You can already see that there is just no chance for the Terran player to keep up with this. We have 28 harvesters against 9. The Terran is on two command centers. He doesn't have three as he would like to have. And we have a spine crawler at the bottom. We are building the second one. We have the queen there. 
and also in the main base to the top right. We were droning up behind it. We have a double gas now at the natural. So we can now decide to go either into a third base. We can tech up into lair. Just as a precaution, Cats built another spine crawler over here just in case. A bit of a misstep by him is that he did not position a Zergling down here at the third. That's something uh, that we will see in later replays. It's something that you should always do once the Terran player moves the command center. Just keep one Zergling at the third base to block the spot. But he already has an Overlord there, so that kind of helps as well. He just sends a few Zerglings here and will now take down the SCVs if possible. And the same is also true for the... Uh, uh, yeah, his third base where he blocks the natural of his opponent. The siege tank being attacked by the spine crawler. Um, the vision is being granted here. We have the zerglings running up. You can always position an overlord here as well. So this creep is being spread towards uh, the right side of the map. So just buying as much time as possible. Going into the lair tech, and you can already see in the supply that this game is basically over. The Terran player is really trying, but there's nothing he can do anymore. He lost way too many harvesters already in the early game, 18 in total. And he was completely surprised by uh, this proxy hatch that we used here. And the idea is not really to take him down. You don't have to do that. Even if he takes down this hatch, moves down, he will have to sacrifice a lot of scans. He will lose a lot of potential mining time at his natural. His third base is delayed. As you know, Terran players really like to go into an early third these days. The Terran is now trying to follow this up with the double command center. But at this point, you can already see at the supply, at the bases that we have, that the game is over. And I don't want to prolong this anymore with the high piece that he lost. There's no chance for him to recover. So this is what happens if your opponent doesn't scout, if he doesn't know how to react to it. It gets you a very easy win in the game, and you will definitely be able to do a lot of damage. But even if that not doesn't happen this way, you will be in a lead if you execute the strategy. We'll go over a few additional replays in just a few seconds. Before we go over the next replay and have a quick look at what other strategies a Terran player could use to counter this and what you would do as the Zerg player, I want to give a sh quick shout out to Katz again and uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me those replays. Katz was always a player who was very innovative and uh, liked to uh, experiment with the strategies. He had a lot of proxy hatch builds also in Wings of Liberty, but back then they were a little bit more gimmicky than this one. This is actually a really viable counter. So if you want to check out Katz on Twitter, make sure that you follow him. His idea is at Katz, uh, root Katz. Sorry, my bad. Um, yeah, and this is definitely something that you can use every time that you see your opponent start with a command center on the high ground, or where you are able to force him to build it on the high ground because your drone is blocking the spot on the low ground. So what a Terran player could do is several things. One of the few things that you could attempt is go into a siege tank, but a siege tank is a very slow counter against what we just saw. The problem with the siege tank is that you can take down the spine crawlers from a safe distance, but it's going to take you a long time, especially when the Zerg player is always is repositioning the spine crawlers then you also have to kill the hatchery so the Terran will fall farther and farther behind whereas the Zerg player can either take straight immutalists on two bases or can go into a third base. The Terran player could also try to build a bunker on the low ground this is what we are going to take a look at in the next replay what you would do and uh, what you can also do is try to uh, go f maybe for draw play or go for uh, uh, some kind of Hellion run by. The big problem with this is that with a Hellion run by, you would have to go through spine crawlers first, where you already take damage with your Hellions. Then later on, the Zerg can just build a few Zerglings back at home and wait for your Hellions to arrive, defend against them. A draw play would also be possible, but it's very late already, and if scouted, it will be defended easily. And the Zerg is still in the position where he blocks your expansion and you as a Terran player and the Terran can not possibly get his uh, third or his second base up. So what you would have to do as a Terran is really try to get this hatch gone as fast as possible because the longer the hatch is on the low ground the longer you are contained the more creep the Zerg player can spread and the more creep there is the more scans you have to use in order to just clear everything up the Zerg will have good vision he will maybe even block the spots on top of the ramp where you can build and all these things really will start to mess with you so your goal has to be to push that back as fast as possible and one of the things that you can do which is according to Katz the best counter to this strategy is going into a second barracks immediately upon scouting what's going on and then once you have a fair amount of marines you push out you take a few SCVs with you and you try to make sure that the hatch is killed as fast as possible shortly after it is actually um, already completed because the idea behind it is 
Yes, you will take a couple of losses, but you take down the hatchery before the queen pops out. And if you do that before the queen pops out, then you will be able to uh, just wait a little bit longer, put down natural, and you don't have to deal with all those creep tumors, which is really, really important. And in this situation, the Zerg is still a little bit in the lead, but you have to make a decision. Uh, at this point, it's really all about the decision making. So as a Zerg player, when you realize, okay, I cannot hold this hatch, everything that I have won't be ready in time, the Terran player responded correctly and put a second barracks up, you just drone up behind it. You don't try to hold this proxy hatch, you don't try to rush in with too many zerglings, you don't overcommit. You just drone up behind it, you take your third base, you keep a few links at the front to see when the Terran player is moving out so that you can just prepare and get a few zerglings out there. But this is all a position where you are still a little bit ahead, but it's all about the decision making to stay ahead and to carry that advantage into the late game. But as we already talked about earlier when we started this VOD, one of the things that is definitely going to happen is that you will get a lot of free wins or very good positions in the game, especially against Terranal players that don't know how to react properly or make a small mistake. So uh, for everyone who is just content with this, you can uh, jump on ladder and of course just try the strategy out. We are going over another replay that will show us what exactly you can do as a Zerg. If the Terran player scouts early on what you do, if he scouts that you are putting the hatch down before it is completed. So now we are in the second replay, when a game on a killer on flats, and this time I actually forward the replay a little bit. Katz is taking his hatch once again at 15, and to the bottom right, the drone just arrives when the SCV is ready to drop the command center first onto the low ground. So what we are doing right now as the Zerg play is just trying to delay this for as long as possible. The drone is just delaying this, delaying this over and over again, and at some point the Terran player is going to be fed up and will be like, okay, well, you know what? I'm just going to drop it on the high ground, which is exactly what we see here. So we don't have enough resources just yet. We are still controlling our drone count and we're droning up to 18. And now the drone is heading back, doubling back and trying to get into position. Gas is already being taken in the main base of the Terran player, but we are just now moving in and dropping the hatch right away. We had an 18 of 18 supply, so we droned up all the way before dropping this third hatch. And now we're having it right there where the Terran player wants to have his command center later on. So this time the Terran player knows what's going on. And this is actually Rossi, it's a Terran player from Australia. Katz is using his alternate ID, the gun run here. And at this position, uh, this is exactly what we uh, um, were kind of trying to cover a little bit. What do we do if the Terran player sees what's going on? Spawning pool is being used immediately after the hatch and then we're going into additional overlords and the drones. And the Terran player, of course, he has to wait now. He's not pulling those SCVs right away. That would be losing way too much mineral time. That would not be cost efficient at all. Barracks is completed and immediately a bunker is being built. And this is the situation where we have the Terran player trying to take down this hatch as fast as he possibly can. Our spawning pool isn't done just yet, but we have the extra overlord so that we can build units. The drones are heading out once again for the spine crawlers, and the Terran player is already starting to attack our hatch with the first marine. As you can see, there's no way for us to stop this bunker unless we pull drones very early in the game, which we usually wouldn't like to do. So now we have the drones moving in, the hatch is done, we start the queen immediately, we already have eight zerglings on the way, we can build another zergling set over here, queen is being produced, zerglings trying to move in, dodging the bunker of course, trying to get all the way to the back, and now the Terran player, who is in this game building a reactor, is in a position where he is a little bit tensed up because even if he doesn't build the reactor and continues to keep producing marines we have more zerglings than he has marines and we can build those two spine crawlers he has to take them down he can't just leave them uh, complete so now we have the zerglings building here more zerglings are coming in from our own main base we have run two bases already links are running in from everywhere double cancel on spine crawler queen pops out at exactly the same time and we are moving in taking down the bunker and taking down all those marines. So once again we are in a brilliant position. We can start with our creep tumors. We have the queen there. We have zerglings trying to do damage. The Terran player is stuck in his main base. He's completely contained. He can't do anything about it. We're even starting to do damage to those two supply depots at the front so he has to pull SCVs to repair. He's losing mining time and we can just drone on behind it. So we're droning. We're taking double gas in the main base. We are still trying to spread our creep here as much as possible and we are also now getting an overlord so that we have vision of the high ground. 
There's even a widow mine being produced by the Terran player because he's looking at this and he's like, well, I'm not quite sure what that is. And if he's going for some kind of veiling aggression or really all-out Zerg attack, then I need something at the front to guard my, my, my choke point. And that's why we have this widow mine now for him. So we have him with a bunk on the high ground, playing this extra safe, trying to go for the starport. We have another overlord over there at the third base. Cats will soon also send in Zirkling here to block a potential third base on attempt to fly the command center there. And we are just crawling it up a little bit at the front, making sure that we contain our opponent as much as possible. And we cr still spread the creep. It will take the Terran player a lot of scans to actually take down all the creep tumors and get this base done. And at the same time, we're just taking the gas, we are on two bases, we are taking straight into Lair now, very soon. That's where it comes into play right there. Could also take a third base, depending on style a little bit, personal preference in the end, and still building additional spine crawlers. Now those spine crawlers are a judgment call. You don't have to go for four spine crawlers in total. That's something that you can do, you can experiment with that, whatever you're more confident with, what you're more comfortable with. That's what you will end up doing. So the Tyrant player, as you can see, is even now trying to switch those two buildings, but because of our creep tumor there, he cannot even land his factory because the creep is already blocking this position. As you can see, that doesn't really fit with the reactor, so that's really, really annoying for the Terran right now. He can't even access the reactor in this situation. Yes, our Overlord will or might be taken down by the Viking, but the Queen can still work against this. Cats drop two additional creep tumors at the back to make sure that they have even more scans forcing them out. And we can now just creep towards the right, we can creep towards our own uh, main base, just making sure that we have the creep spread towards the middle of the map. We are going into the spy attack, we have the spore crawler up just in case there's some kind of banshee play. Zerklings at the back to deal with potential drop play. Going into metabolic, uh, metabolic boost, the speed upgrade for the Zerklings. Really late. Just because we don't need it earlier. You can go into your Hilaire tech before you get speed, just because there is no reason for you to get it earlier. There's not a lot that the, Zerg player, the Terran player can really do to counter this. So now after all, able to claim uh, the reactor here. Might just have mispositioned his factory earlier on actually, but now trying to go into Hellbats. But you can see with the supply that we are already ahead in supply, we are massively ahead in tech, we can take a third base, there's still no mining at the natural, the Zirkling there blocking the spot, and the Terran player is just trying to hold his own, going for a massive amount of factories here to get rid of all his minerals, his gas, going into additional tech labs here, trying to play a mech composition of two of his ping geysers is not something that is really going to work for you but he's trying it anyway, and that just shows how confused he is here. He doesn't really know how to deal with this, it's just a very uncomfortable position for the Terran to be in, especially when this hatch is up, defended by a lot of spine crawlers, and the creep is being spread like by a madman. So Katz is now even going into his third base, and we have him with the spire already completed, so he can produce mutalisks ten at a time. Those halberds you already guessed it, they are not going to do a thing, and here comes the drop play that we talked about earlier. The problem really being, drop play against the Mutalists not, is not going to help you. You have the option of getting the Spine Claws in your main base, you have a few Zirklings available, and even with, for example, the Banshee play, that doesn't help you either, because yes, you might be able to take down this natural, but you're going into Mutalists anyway as the Zerg, so Banshees are one of the best things that could actually possibly happen to you, especially when they are this late. So now the drop is down, and immediately uh, with the Mutalisks now on the field, Rossi decides that this is game, that he has no chance of winning this match anymore. So as you can see, a very, very solid opening if your opponent goes for Command Center first. It doesn't really matter if he scouts the hatch or if he doesn't scout it. Whatever he does, you will be in a position that will give you a bit of a lead over your opponent just because you delay his mining at the natural for this long and you also delay the third Command Center by a serious amount of time because the Terran player is forced to react to what you do. You can use this in team matches, you can use this in best of threes to get a bit of a lead if your opponent doesn't really know how to counter this. And always a lot of free wins that you will get on ladder if you meet opponents who don't know how to properly deal with this. Try it out, play a little bit with it, try to find out what the timings are for you. Some of you might need a few additional zirklings or might be more conf comfortable just going into a third base instead of the fast attack into uh, the lair and then the mutalisks. A lot of things that you can toy around with. It's just an opening idea that you have if you are facing a Terran player that starts with the command center first. It's actually pretty neat, pretty cool trick. 
So keep that in mind when you let out the next time and when you meet a Terran player that tries to start with an early CC. And I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial, learned something. Make sure that you drop a comment into the YouTube comments if you had success with it on Letter. Just share your personal experience and how you fared with it. Always give it a thumbs up if you like the strategy. And also make sure, as pointed out earlier, that you follow Cats on uh, Twitter. His ID, once again, is RootCats. You can always follow myself as well. My ID on Twitter is at Calder. And I guess I'm going to see you soon with another strategy for StarCraft 2 or another video blog about Korea. Good luck lettering it up and uh, tell me how you went, if you were able to uh, defeat one or two Terrans, or if you're a Terran player, how you fared against the strategy and how you were able to count it. See you soon.